episode 12. Let's wrap it all up. Welcome back to the shop on my channel and the 12th and final episode of 18th century chest of drawers. The finish. So now I'm going to put the finish on. As you see, I've got the legs are, you know, we saw in the previous video, I've got the legs on and everything. So it's up on the wheelie cart again. So I'm going to wheel it around. I have to set up um, plastic sheeting back here to protect the shop from a little bit of overspray I'm going to get from the shellac. The drawers are over here awaiting their turn at the spray gun. But the case is going to come first. It's all sanded, smoothed down, and cleaned off of sawdust. I used uh, rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol, denatured alcohol to get the... Uh, the sawdust off, which is nice and clean. Give a quick wipe down before I start spraying. So, without further ado, let's set up the tiny little fake spray booth. Now, this is going to be, I'm just going to do this quickly in the background and then we'll come back and we'll, and we'll shoot some shellac. <music> This is what passes for a finishing room when you don't have a finishing room. This is taped up on three sizes. I've got to seal up one more spot over there. Um, I'm going to be using the, the Zinsser Amber Shellac, uh, which is cut with alcohol, and uh, my handy dandy airless paint sprayer like I did last time. Now, two coats of Amber Shellac. Now, I can rotate this around. This is still on the wheelie things nicely like this, move it forward like that. Um, but because it's shellac and it's cut with alcohol, it evaporates very quickly. So I can start at the top, work my way down the piece and finish the bottom. By the time I hit the bottom, I can start at the top again to get the second coat and then put the second coat on and then move this out of the way, bring the drawers in one at a time and shoot the drawers. And once they're dried, I'm gonna give them a couple hours, maybe even a whole day just to sit. I'm going to sand it with uh, 320 grit sandpaper on my little hand sanding pad that has slightly foam backing on it, just to give it a little bit of roughness, just to take off any of the fuzz or haze that may have shown up after the painting. When that's done, as I'm ready to do the polyurethane. We'll just take all this down, and uh, I'll hand rub the Watco polyurethane, hand, wipe on polyurethane on it, probably two coats, maybe three, but probably two coats. And that's, uh, I like to do four hours between coats with that. Sometimes I'll just do a coat and come back and the next day and do the second coat and then do the third coat. Anyway, this is going to be a two to three day process. Now, I think I mentioned in the video when I did Mara's armoire, when I did the bed for the third, for the bedroom, the, the, the four poster bed, the finishing on that bed took six days. Um, because there was the amber shellac, sanded, wipe on polyurethane, sanded, many multiple coats, and I let it cure overnight. So it took about five to six days to do that finish. And by the way, it is, it looked like this will look when I'm done with the polyurethane when I finished, and now it has a nice darker reddish color to it because oxidation did its thing. So let's get busy and spray some shellac. And we're ready to go. I have, I have the shellac in the sprayer. I have this wiped down and ready to go. I have the ladder so I can get up to do the top first. So uh, let's do some spraying. Um, I'm gonna put my mask on. Since I'm spraying inside and not, out, not outside like last time, I'll be using a, a uh, 
VOC respirator. Oh, I want to turn over, turn off the overhead fan as well, because you don't need a lot of extra air currents when you're spraying paint. Uh, there we go. So put the put the mask on, and um, I'll tell you what. Let's cue the music and get spraying, and then we'll cue the time lapse. There you go. That's two coats of Amershlac on this. I see some places I need to do some touch-ups. And the beauty of a shellac is you can do it with with um, uh, you can do it with uh, alcohol. If you have to thin something out or get rid of a run or something like that, it's, it is to redissolve with alcohol. So you, that's what makes working with it so much easier. So I will continue on with this. Get the drawers done. Put the hardware in and then we'll finish up this video. A day and a half later, the spraying is done. Um, here's another example of why you should try to get the wood from the same tree. Notice the color coloration here versus the coloration here. That's because this is all from different trees. It will oxidize over time and darken nicely, but when you can't get from one tree, this is what you get. So what's next? Uh, I've talked about this before. The first step is to use my little pam palm sander here and just, this is very smooth. It really is, but I just wanna knock the tiny little bits of fuzz that you might feel, little bits you might feel, and basically it takes this. That's it, it's done. Like I showed with Mara's armoire, it's done, same thing. Just And now it's just glass smooth. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about why the shellac first. It might be hard to see in the camera, but this is an example of shellac first, and then the then the white bond polyurethane. It's darker, yes, because it's amber shellac. But um, if you see it, I don't know if you can see it in, in this light. I won't know to look at post, but hardwoods will blotch just like softwoods, softwoods will. Cherry's no exception. Uh, maple will blotch. And the, the shellac obviously is a sanding sealer and the amber bit gives a little extra color. But I don't know if you can see the blotchiness of that right there, because this is shellac first, this is just the polyurethane. So, I noticed I had a few places I needed to touch up after I finished spraying with the big gun. And I use these. I've used these for years. I will put a link in the description. The Prevail little spray thingies. Basically, you put your, your medium down here. It's got a little spray can that screws on the top, and you can do little touch-ups. Uh, it doesn't fit. You can't adjust the fan on these. It's just a round, a round pattern. The uh, polyurethane I'm going to use, of course, is, again, the Watco polyurethane, but uh, just a little preview of what it's going to look like with the hardware in place. And there you go. This is brass, un uncovered brass. It's un uncoated brass, uh, as is the pull. So this will, this will, will, will patina over time and give it a nice little, little, little patina on there. So now I need to do is, is basically give this the light sanding I just talked about. And then wipe on the polyurethane. So I'll, I'll, I'll do the sanding. I'll show a little bit of wiping on the polyurethane uh, in, in this segment. In the next segment, we'll see the finished product with the hardware in place. Funny thing about the hardware. So I got the hardware in, and uh, the screws, they're steel screws, CAD-plated steel screws. They're kind of nice. But 
they're not designed for three quarter inch stock like these drawers are made out of. So I have to nip off about an eighth of an inch of every single one of these screws. Now I've got a cutter for screws, so I can do that. Or I could just order shorter screws, but I'll just cut these off. And, and of course, there's the bales. Typical 18th century Chippendale bales. Let me get to sanding and let's do some polyurethane. Got it all sanded. Um, just, you know, wiping off the powders and the dust. If you, I don't know if you noticed in the high speed or the, the uh, time lapse that I used steel wool, 4 0 steel wool for uh, the detail parts, the crown and the base and all that, where you can't get sandpaper in. But get this. Uh... Now I'm just wiping this off dry, which is fine, it'll work. It's going to get a sanding after the first coat of uh, the wipe on poly anyway. And I have to pull the drawers out partially to do that so that I can get behind the drawers and the cross pieces here and here. And now we're ready to start wiping on the poly. Let me get something from over here if I can find it. It's a package of, hmm, where did they go? They're hiding from me. One moment. I have returned. Paper bowls to hold the polyurethane in while I'm wiping it on. Now, you know what paper bowls do. They absorb your finish whatever liquid you may have in them. These are Dixie. I don't have a part number or whatever, but they have soak proof shield. What that means is, and microwave safe, of course. What that means is, is there's a thin plastic coating on the inside of these bowls, prevents the liquid from soaking into the paper part of the bowl as well. And these, of course, are biodegradable or something like that. So I will now start with the wiping on of the poly. I have my little, my little bucket of polyurethane here and a t-shirt that's many decades old that has been washed millions of times, 100% cotton, using it as my wipe rag. I've already done the side. Now I'm doing the front parts. The drawers are over there. They're going to get done later. But I just want to give you an idea of just generally what, it's, what the process is here. I'm wiping with the grain. Add to the to the t-shirt when I need to. Then using the reflections of light, so you can see if you've got it too thick or too thin in some spots. Let me get down. reflection off of here. That's good. That's, that's good. And that is the first coat on the body of the chest of drawers. And now I have to wait for that to cure overnight. I'll do the next coat, put that aside, and start on the drawers. So you can see how this is time consuming. You want it to cure. Um, before you put the next coat on. So, there we go. Co coat one on the thingy, just the uh, drawersy thingy. And we're done. Last episode. Um, I didn't have enough hardware. I thought I ordered enough, but I didn't. It's on the way. When I put it up in the bedroom, if I don't have it, it's supposed to be here next week sometime. I can just put string poles. 
But this is the Chippendale hard drawer. We'll get a close up in a second. Uh, small drawers, I know what's going in there, and larger drawers. This actually has more space for storage of clothes than the one I have up there. Although the one I have up there looks actually bigger, it's longer this way. But Chippendale pulls. And like I said early on, I want to be able to pull from one side and have the drawer open. And that's what I'm talking about. Be able to pull from one side and the drawer opens neatly. Um, as I stated earlier, this is polished, uncoated brass. So these parts are going to patina with time as the wood darkens with oxidation. Although, as, as, as stated earlier, this is darker than this because it's all out of different trees. If I could afford to buy a whole tree, whole, you know, cut tree, I would do that. But A, I can't afford it, and B, I can't store it. Let's take a closer look at the poles a little bit. One of the nice things about this kind of hardware that I buy is, <clears throat> in this case, the, uh, these are nuts, and they're screws that come in from the back, 832 screws that lo lock that in place, and then just go through holes in the, in, in, in the brass here, the escutcheon. And um, because it's all three inch, my jig, I can set it to three inch and go ahead and drill the holes. And you, you screw it in there and make sure that the bale is loose when you screw it in so that it doesn't stick up or jam on the way up or down. Sometimes these will, because these aren't, these aren't, you know, really, these aren't Horton brasses, as I would like to say. Although Horton brasses have done that before to me in the past. Um, so there's that in the, uh, the dovetails on the uh, side piece, the uh, through pieces look kind of nice too. See, little dovetail right there. Pull it open, little haunch dovetail. That's a period, it doesn't really serve any purpose other than looking nice, this is a period detail. And that's, that's the only reason why it's there. I could have just literally just butt these up against here and have a dados running through here and like I did with the last piece. And unlike the last piece, as I mentioned earlier and I've shown, is this does not have drawer pulls, a drawer glides on it. It's just wood on wood like an original piece. And there you have it, 18th century chest of drawers. This is going upstairs soon. Uh, I have to clear out the one that's up there and then we move this one upstairs. Uh, as, again, cherry, all solid wood, period hardware, period construction techniques, as much as I could do. And now I'm happy. It's done. Except, of course, that hardware thing I had mentioned. So, change of plans on the next video. We need a new tool for the lathe, which I'll be manufacturing. Uh, I've drawn it up on AutoCAD. I'll, I'll publish those drawings in the video if anybody wants the DXF files for the parts I'm going to show you, you can have, I'll, I'll put them up there so you can get them. Anyway, so until next time, hey, hey, make great things out of wood.